G'day guys, it's Rowan and Eden here. We are currently heading down to Exmouth for our first ever fishing trip. Now, what normally happens in an intro like this is I ramble on a little bit too much. I'm going to pass the camera to Eden and she's going to fill you guys in on what's been going on so far this trip and what we got in store. Okay, so I've been to Exmouth a few times and so has Rowan, but we neither of us have ever fished there, so excited for that. I'm hoping to catch a dolly, maybe see a whale shark. Um, but yeah, we had some car troubles on the way here, um, but we took some videos of that, so you can have a look at that. <laughs> no, I can't do it. No, we're st we are still currently having car troubles. Um, we flicked that around, so what's going on at the moment? We had to turn around about 45 minutes out of Karatha after hitting the road, so we actually didn't forget anything today, which was really, really good. And then the engine light came on 45 minutes out and we had to turn back around, get back to Karatha. No mechanics could see us today. We weren't missing this trip. We've got accommodation booked, so I bought a scan tool. DPF filter issues. Uh, I've had this problem before. The car's done 90,000 Ks. Second time it's ever done it. I've just been resetting it the entire way, so the car's been going in and out of limp mode. You probably don't care too much about that, but the road trip's been a bit of a nightmare because of that. But at the moment we are right there, as you can see on that sign, 166 k's out of Exmouth. So rather than rip straight into the fishing on this episode, we thought we would show you guys a little bit along the way. We've got some accommodation booked, all the sorts. So we'll go through all that as we go on. But for now, we'll hit the road. I'm not too sure how much of the Pilbara you guys have seen, but the landscape doesn't vary too much. But we'll show you pretty much what we've been seeing for the last few hours and probably what we'll see for the next few. And then we'll catch you in Exmouth. Right, we made it. After all of that headache of the car doing whatever it wanted to do, we made it here. Limp mode is no more for the time being. So we're just going to drive around to our accommodation or our unit, assuming we're at the right place. Thought we were. Oh, maybe we're not here, eh? Where else will we be? I think we're at the other one. True. Better go figure that out. Yeah, I think we drove into the wrong place to be honest. I think I ended up booking somewhere different to what I thought I booked. Goose. Is there any of these? Yeah, these what number are we? 38 dash 9. These are all like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You're gonna see your bed and a uh, little sink. Key's dodgy already. Off to a good start. Maybe this that one. No. Mm. It's retro. There's a light switch in this damn thing. Well, this is what two hundred and two dollars a night gets you an X mouth if anyone's curious. Gets you a bedroom and a sink. That's the main one, but we got this room so we can have the boat. And the ute straight outside without having to unhitch, so... We got milk. That's what's worth it, that one. Alright, we've just left our five-star accommodation to come to the Whalebone Brewery because we've had about ten people tell us that it's the best place to eat. So I'm pretty keen to try the pizza. And 
and we'll probably catch you a bit later back in the hotel room to let you know what we're up to tomorrow. Okay, so that's where we are right now. This is tomorrow's forecast. That's Western Australia. We happen to be the only blue area for the whole place tomorrow morning, which is unheard of for Exmouth. And we'll be driving across to here and launching on this side here and fishing the Lingaloo Reef in the morning. So that's us. Just double checking all that. We're gonna go to bed now. We had a nice dinner. Gonna get a good night's sleep in. It's nine o'clock at night now, so we'll be up at four o'clock and then we'll catch up with you guys and we'll get on out there. So we've just got to the boat ramp, Tandabitty boat ramp. Um, Rowan is just going to start getting the boat ready. I'm just taking some scenic shots. Bit disappointed we couldn't get a coffee this morning, but I guess it's just a bit too early. Um, it is about quarter past five. A little bit of a breeze, but that's all right. How are you feeling, baby? Feeling good. Feeling excited. Same. A bit of a brisk breeze this morning, but it should be alright. It should die off as the morning builds, hopefully. Good morning everyone, uh, I've just seen these little school of bait fish getting around here, I think they're little tunas, oh, and um, I've just flicked the plastic out, and we need some bait for a deep drop, so this will be perfect, yeah, a little, little yellow fin. So, boom! See, uh, that is quite literally the best possible outcome for the start of our day. We're in about 120 metres of water at the moment. So this is exactly what we needed. This guy's been off the ground. Like crazy, but... Oh. Right, so a little yellow fin. <laughs> little yellow fin too to start the day. <laughs> Yeah, have a drop, see if anything equates. Not me damn boat. Okay, so Eden just missed out on the little jelly bean tunas that were fanging around then. They're still sort of lurking around a bit, but I sort of got the first eat there and then they weren't too interested after that, but we've kept that one. She's now just strip baited it and chucked it on her jig down to the bottom. So a jig with a bit of bait, a bit of a hybrid setup. We are in 111 metres of water at the moment. We came out here looking for a fad, so it's not here, so we're just going to fish around this ground for a little bit and just work out sort of what we're doing. We're on the shelf. We haven't fished this deep in years, if not ever, for Eden at least. And, um, yeah. Target species for today is pearl perch. If we can land one of them, we'll be super stoked. If we can get some gold band, of course, red emperor, anything like that. But mainly just wanting to mix it up. There's a big bus stuff happening out here. Mainly just wanting to mix it up from stuff that we can't catch normally in Karatha. So anything that's different to what we normally get, we'll be happy with. I'm really nervous, to be honest. I've never fished this deep. I it's going gonna, gonna to be knackered after one fish. Rowan was just reeling that in so he could move and he's got something. Be another little tuna. So I've had this jerk shad sitting out off the side of the boat for the last 20 minutes while I was tying a new rig for 
Aiden because we're about to go drop a pad in Ostar and actually see if we can get some fish in the deeper water and then this miraculously last second has got another tuna I think so it'll be welcome aboard because we'll use this one as well it takes the pressure off the bait because we haven't brought any bait with us today Good job, darling. Right, so he's going down there. So that's two little jelly bean tuna for a bait. We've just tied a paternoster on a nice big 20 ounce sinker that's going to go down to the bottom. Ed's going to drop that one down and see if we can find some deep demersal fish out here, something we haven't caught before. Is that what they're called, jelly bean? No, we just call them jelly bean tunas. That's so cute. Does that look like jelly bean? So we're about to drop this down. We got a Paternoster rig with a big ass sinker to get to 250 meters or whatever we're in with a bit of that tuna from earlier on my new rod and reel, which I'm very excited about. I've had this sitting here for like two years and I haven't used it. So I just had to get a rod for it, which I did. So let's see. Used to this sort of swell. Eden's on a pig straight away. I, I missed. It. I wasn't even ready for it because I thought there's no chance she's gonna hook up that quick. But this is gonna kill me getting this up. Oh, we're in about 220 meters of water. Oh, oh a bit off, eh? Bugger. There'll still be a hook on there unless you, is the sinker on there or? Uh, so. Alright. New rig time. Rowboat's on. First first deep drop of the day. For me. I'm not throwing any celebrations until I get it to the boat, but it feels like a good sized fish, a fair size one. Huh? Hopefully it's something good. Hopefully it's a goldie or something. But it's just a long way up. Anything can happen. Oh. I hope it's something good for your sake. Oh shit, I'm getting bites too. Trying to make sure I don't get shark here. Oh no, I think I dropped it. You dropped it? Joking! Oh, was it a goldie? Hold on, what's that? I've still got my line in the water. Oh, that's a pinky. Hey! That's a pink sapper head. 
It's definitely red. Interesting. I reckon that's pinky. His head doesn't look quite square enough. Yeah, I don't know. It must be close. Either way, shark got it, so bummer. Right, I've got something huge on, but it's coming up, so it makes me think it's not a shark and it's just a big fish and it's just given up. Hopefully we can get it up and get it past the sharks. Yeah, I'll check back in in 20 minutes when it's up. It's one of the biggest difference between Exmouth and Caratha when it comes to fishing is in Caratha the sharks will just take your whole fish and we're never really left with a head to know what it was that comes up. They just take the whole thing, whereas the sharks in Exmouth are so well trained that they just leave you the head and they spit out the rig and off they go waiting for the next one to come up. Hopefully it doesn't get eaten, but yeah, completely. Oh, there it goes. Alright, that's a shark yeah. now, so just got real heavy. Well, unless it's just running from whatever it is. It's still coming up. Or if it was a shark that took a bite. So we're in 150 metres of water. Oh no! Bra brand new rod. We were a bit sus on if that was the right rod for this reel, so. Mm. Do you reckon I can still get it up? <laughs> yeah, I guess keep winding. Damn, that's, that's a bummer. Brand new rod, that's the first day we've ever used that one. It's about just under 300 bucks, that one. Matched it with a new reel that Aiden hadn't paired up yet, and... Oh, well, that just made it a lot harder. We can swap if you want. Even just chuck it in the rod holder and winch it. I've got that cushion on it. It's, oh, right. yeah. it's not too bad. This could honestly be another, like, ten minutes of winding. That's all right. If I had stopped the camera, we would have missed that snapping off, so <laughs> you never know what you're going to get on camera. It's true. Go Eden, go Eden. Go Eden. Please be massive and please be a fish. Alright, she's almost straight up and down under the boat now. Here it is. Here it comes, what is it? What is it? Here it comes. Please be a big fish. I should probably grab the net, but who knows what's happening here. Float it, float it. Oh, it looks like a shark. I think Eden's just wound up a shark. Yeah, 150 meters. Keep coming? Yeah. So Eden has just brought a shark up from 150 meters on a, on a snap rod thanks to the shark. Fucking dog. There you go, that's that's X mouth for you by definition right there. Whoa, whoa, watch me boat, mate. Right. We're just gonna cut that guy off. I'm not getting anywhere near him, so. Boom. See ya. Bummer. That is devastating. I'm not even worried about the rod, I'm worried about all that effort I just put in for nothing. <laughs> so here's the rod Shimano Extraction. Paid 250, 270 or something for it, we're a bit. If you about whether or not to go P E what is it? P six, P five. Weren't sure what lines on that reel. Obviously it's got a strong drag, so we'll probably upgrade that one to P eight or something and not that that happen again. Where? Yeah. Sally. It's a Sally. Right, so we've just been driving along and we've seen something black pop up out of the water. 
And it's a sailfish, I believe. If you get onto this, it's gonna be sick. No luck. No luck, but we're close to where we planned on going. So we're switching ground now. We're in 80 meters of water because we've just had no luck with the sharks so far today. We're getting smashed by sharks everywhere we go. We're moving sort of five mile each time, finding a good lump, finding good ground, and then dropping down. And then two seconds later, after you get a fish, it's just a shark straight onto it. And they're right through the water column here, so they're playing uh, pretty tough. It's Pretty hard work if you're trying to wind up from 200 metres of water and you just get a shark right at the top of it. So, we'll try luck in 80 and then if we need to, we'll move back in shallower after that. I was feeling very disheartened after my rod snapped and then I pulled a shark up from 150 metres, but after some smarties and some shapes, I'm ready to try again. Alright, this is the most action we've had in a little while. We've just moved to 80 metres of water to try to give ourselves a fighting chance with the fish here. Oh, so... I lost the whole lot, I think, probably bitten off. But that was a good, better than we've done. Yeah, good start. She probably had 20 metres to go before we were hopefully in a bit of a clear zone. Might We'll give it another couple more cracks here and then see what we can come up with. But that was, yeah, first drop, good fish and shark. Go on, baby, show them who's boss. It's not a massive fish, but I want to see if I can get it to the boat. Before, you know, who shows up. I'm kind of glad it's not a massive fish in this way. Uh oh, I'm getting bugged. Get one past the sharks, yeah, what is it? What is it? Please be. Looks like an emperor of some sort. Oh, two cod. Dropped it. Oh, it still looks, no, you're on. It's only small, eh? Yeah. Alright, Eden's on for Better something. As long as it's not the same as what I just got. Seen that thing written down, so uh, is that Robson? I think that's a sea broom, eh? I think they're hell good, Robinson sea broom. I think. Don't quote me on that. If I'm gonna look like an idiot because I won't be able to cut this clip, but I think, I think that's a sea broom. So I'm gonna look that one up. But must have got something different. All right, so I've just confirmed it on the app here, the Wreckfish West app. Awesome app, Robinson Seabroom, five star. Eden's gonna hold that up for us and give us a closer look. That's our first time ever catching one of these guys, but I have heard they're really good eating, so it'd be nice to try something different. Yeah. And it's nice to get something past the sharks. I think I've got a big fish on. <sighs> or a small shark. On. Gotta be a good fish. What happened? Yep. Still on. It's like swimming towards me. Big shakes. Whoa! I don't know what the hell is going on there. Hopefully it's not a fish getting eaten. 
Bugger. Damn it. Yeah, that's... That's... I don't know why, that's what it looks like when you get a shark on there. Mmm, not good. Not good at all. Oh, watch that rod. Right, well, I'm ending that clip there because that's just a shark having a field day now. So, Eden can sort that one out, and I'm going to get back down in the water and see what we can get. I really thought I had a shark, and then it's just behaving so weirdly. It's just swimming towards me and then swimming away and getting lighter and heavier. I'm gaining line back, I can see it. There's I something on there. This isn't what was spooling her. This is the head of something she just lost. <whistles> is that a big spango head? It would have been a very nice fish. Got it up. Get it up, baby. Get it up. <laughs> I'm holding off the shark. Yeah, Eden's got the shark on right now, so I dropped down and I've got something here. Hopefully it's good. Eden just lost a spango and I've got a... Uh, looks like a spango. Spango. Hey! Oh. It's nice to get something in the boat. Not the fish I wanted. Better than no fish. Yeah, we'll take it. For sure. Sadly, you've got to reef the fish up so hard up here, so you can't really give them a fighting chance to get them up. There he is there, Spangled Emperor on a Paternostery. Not a bad size on that one, so we'll keep him and put him away. Rowan's cutting up the second tuna for bait. I think he's sticking with his Paternoster. And tuna actually looks there. really good, considering I didn't bait it at all. It's yellow fin there. Bit of sashimi. And I'm sticking with jigs because I like to have a bit of variety in the water. But yeah, I always put a little bit of bait on just for safe measure. Eden's filming with the shark on again. I took it as my opportunity to get down. And then straight away I got bitten off on one hook, but I did a had an ostery with two hooks. I reckon. Oh. Don't lose it, don't lose it. Oh no! Go, go, go! <laughs> yes! Blood. It's already been bit, no. Alright, Pinky. Hey! Oh. Hell yeah! So. There's another pinky, not a bad one too. Up above there you can see the other hook's been bitten off on the Paternoster, but little male pink snapper that one. So cool. Probably about as far north as we'll catch these guys, so welcome change to the bag. Nice job. Wish that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I just handed off my rod to Rowan at the last minute because I was exhausted, but I just pulled this guy in for probably 10 minutes. That's a big shark. All right, so here's what we're seeing just about every time we move spots. Exactly like this, you'll find some crown and then straight up underneath you, the sharks just come up from the bottom. As soon as I realise the boat's there and then they're just hovering around the boat waiting for any fish that we pull up. Alright, we've pulled up to another spot, 160 metres, but I'm just going to let Rowan drop first because I'm a bit tired. My arms and my back are pretty tired, so if there's sharks I'll let Rowan take care of them and then I'll drop down and try and get a fish for once. We're going to try and get onto hopefully a gold band. I think that's really all we care about, a gold band or a pearl perch to finish the day would be awesome, but we've been chewing through a fair bit of our deep water gear, just losing it to the sharks, so give another run, if we lose it all, we lose it all, but 
It's getting to about 2 o'clock in the Arvo now, so the wind's starting to pick up a little bit. So we'll see what we can do on these couple drops and show you. Well, I just got to the bottom and we've moved spot about 500 metres from the last one. And then two minutes later, probably the same shark shows up right there, hovering around the back of the boat. So Good luck. Yeah. Get that dog up here. I don't know what fish this is. It actually, I would hate to say it, but I've never caught a pearl perch, but it feels small, but heavy and white. Like it's got a lot of water in its mouth. Do you reckon the sharks are puffy? No, I don't think you... Because it's not biting, eh? Anyway. Come on. Oh, no. Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Mm. I've got the trolling motor in the water at the moment, otherwise I'd probably would have just locked the drag up and gone for a quick fang. Then that way you can get the fish away from the sharks and pull it up sort of thing, but they're just everywhere here, so it doesn't matter where you drag it to, one spot to the next, there's sharks there waiting. Yeah, he got done on the way up. Little red throat with a bite mark on him, yeah. Oh, cool. We've just come in a bit closer into 35 metres of water now. We were just getting annihilated by sharks out in the deeper water, so reeling a fish up from 200 meters or even 100 meters manually by hand and then just losing it you know anywhere between there and the boat really really sucks so we've switched it up and coming a bit closer and we're just uh, sticking to what we can sort of manage at the moment to get past the sharks so we're finding these red throat emperor meant to be good chewing I've never eaten one personally so um yeah we'll probably keep a few of these guys as well even though they're only small fill it them up and I'm sure they'll make a good feed as well but yeah we'll see if we can find anything bigger in the mix while we're here. Go baby go! Oh, oh what is it? What is that? Trevally. Oh it is a... Uh... Shame! <laughs> oh I forgot all about Trevally's. We forgot they even existed. Call it. Uh, she thought she was on. It was a foul hook. The old foul hook make every, makes everything feel a hundred times bigger than oh, it is. Mama. So we've just booked in for dinner now. We're going to head back. 
we're going to put the boat away for the night back in town and we've still got another night here and then tomorrow before we drive back to Carrathal. So we'll wrap this video up here and we'll start fresh tomorrow morning. We're going to hit the other side of the Gulf and it'll be a completely different style video to this one. So rather than roll it into that one, we'll start fresh. And we hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next one tomorrow.